about 15 and ready to go to school. Winter and it's been snowing heavily. Hear footsteps approaching front door. That comfy crunch crunch you get when you walk on fresh snow. Must be the postman, although he's several hours early. Probably something to do with the weather. Go to the front door. No mail. Must have come here by mistake instead of the next door. Leave to go to school. Set of footprints coming from my gate to my front door. Nothing going back. Walk out of gate. Still early in the morning so snow is completely untouched. Except for a set of footprints that start at the bottom of my street and come up to my front door but go nowhere else. Parents hadn't left for work. I have no brothers or sisters. Even if I did they wouldn't have walked out the house and down the street backwards. Whoever it was could have retraced their steps after they realized they were at the wrong door but what would be the point? Never answered it bros. There's been a lot of shenanigans since then involving the front door area too. But I won't bother getting into them. I won't bother getting into them? Why not? I mean, I can if you want. They're just the kind of thing that aren't spooky unless you experience them. For instance, locked door when mom goes out one night, upstairs, not doing anything so it's quiet. Hear her trying to put the key in the lock when she comes back. Realize I've left the key in the lock so her key won't fit. This always pisses her off. Hear my keys hit the wooden floor of the hallway. Her keys must have forced mine out. At least she can let herself in now. She doesn't come in. Go downstairs to check. My keys are hanging up. She comes home about an hour later. Different night she's out. Hear the same lock shenanigans. Don't fall for it this time. She shouts for me through the letterbox. At least I know it's her. Go downstairs. It's like 1am so I shout through the door to make sure it is actually her. Because there's no light outside and it's genuinely pitch black out there. This isn't a great area. Get no response. Get knife. Open door. No one there. This has happened dozens of times, both with me hearing her shout and her hearing me shout, depending on which of us is home and which of us is out. Time of day or night, it doesn't seem to make a difference. There's one that always freaks me out and I fucking hate when it happens. Mom not home. My bedroom is right above the front door. Her footsteps, because she always wears heels so you can't mistake them, coming along the path to the front door. Listen for her putting her key in or shouting for me. Dog stays downstairs in the living room on its own. Starts doing this really fucking creepy as fuck ominous whimper that I can hear upstairs. It's not really a whimper though. And it's not really a howl. It's like a high pitched distress thing. Happens every time the footsteps happen. There's so many different little things like that. But like I say, they aren't spooky unless you're here when they occur. Only ever seen something once and I totally shit my pants. What did you see Anon? And what does it not hurt and not you shout through the door? What does it not hurt and not you shout through the door? It's either just my name if it's LARPing as my mum or mum if it's LARPing as me. It didn't start with the door though. It started when both of us were home. A few people witnessed it too. For example, upstairs with QDGF. Hear mum shout from downstairs. Go down and see what she wants. She didn't shout for me. Me and GF clearly heard her shout. Then the reverse happens where I'll be upstairs alone and my mom is in the living room with aunt. She burst into my room completely panicked, asking what's wrong. Don't know what she's talking about, I didn't shout for her. Her and aunt both heard me shout like I was in trouble. That went on for a while, but rarely when only the two of us were alone. Not sure if dad ever experienced anything because they got divorced not long after the snow incident and he never mentioned anything to me. What did you see Anna? Come home late one night. Path to my front door is really narrow, maybe 3 feet wide, with a wall about 5 feet high on the left and the house onto the right. 12 to 15 foot further along is a tall fence and gate that leads to the back garden. As mentioned, it's super dark that night. Reach front door. Glance along path. See what I think is two people standing there. Eyes are just better, and it's just one. Looks like something black, wearing white face with the hood up. Ask who they are. Get no response. Don't take my eyes off them and try to unlock the door. Get in house. As I do, hear that noise like when your coat brushes against a wall and you're trying to get past in rushing footsteps. Have axe in hallway I use for chopping logs. Pick axe up because they're either going to try to rush inside or run past the door. Neither happens. Go outside with axe. No one is there. I had the hall light on so I would have seen anyone passing and my gate makes a distinct noise when you use it. So they didn't go out that way neither and you need to use the gate to get out. I usually avoid this board as most of the stories written on here are kinda goofy fanfic that wouldn't even pass a 6th grade creative writing class. Trollmeanface.png.jpg.webm.mov.mp4.mp3 
I was raised on folklore and atrocities committed to our island resulting in paranormal activity from my family's home island, which I would love to share one day. For now, I have decided that I wanted to share my experience with the spooky in my motherland, Greece. Be me six years ago, born in the US but lived internationally since nine, moved to my home island in Greece due to my father getting his dream job. I speak Greek at the equivalent level of an average high school student does Spanish. Enrolled into public school where they teach in Greek. Make a good friend named Gianni, pronounced Gianni. Can barely communicate with each other, but we may do. On the island, there were many abandoned houses, businesses, hospitals, etc. Always go parkour in different ruins and explore. Sometimes we were lucky and find old photos or personal belongings from as far back as World War II times. One time, both families drive up to my native village, which held at its peak 3,000 people, but now only has 12 year round residents. If you don't know Greece is a very mountainous region, and my island especially is 90% mountains so to get to our village we had to drive up a long thin windy road where the majority had no safety rails protecting the car from just flying off. Finally get to the village. We go and see a little hut right on the edge of the mountain which housed old boxes of bones with photos on them and names written in Greek. Our parents showed us the boxes and even one of my ancestors who were buried here. They tell me the significance of why their bones were in the boxes, which I now forget. As they tell us the story, in the corner of my eye, I see Yanni digging around in one of the boxes and putting something in his cargo shorts pocket. Eventually, we fuck off and go explore the ruins of the village. We climb to the roof of one of the ruins. Yanni says something in Greek, but all he understood was piss. He went to the side of the roof and pissed. Wait, why is he digging in his pants so much over there? He turns around and I see a whole bone sticking from his jean pants zipper and he does pretty much the modern day thug shaker. He points at it while laughing in a heavy accent and says, ha ha ha, boner, my face when this sick motherfucker. Say the equivalent of, you just defiled the grave moron. He has a confused face for a second before the ground beneath him gives way and he falls off the roof. I run over to peek over the edge and he is writhing in pain holding his leg. Taking a closer look, his lower leg bone has completely snapped. His foot was dangling in air completely perpendicular. My dumbass thinks that if I return the bone to the grave, it will fix his leg. Jump down, grab the bone, and run to the hut and throw the bone in a random box near where I saw it taken from. Run back up to him dying of exhaustion. Remember, this is a very mountainous terrain, even being in the village. The absolute look of fucking horror on my face as I realized he is dead. He was just unconscious due to shock, but I didn't know that. Ran and got my parents. Took him to a hospital 30 minutes away with one doctor and one nurse since we were in the fucking mountains. Okay, I think you guys get it now. Leg thankfully was a complete break but a clean one. Didn't have the equipment to put a cast on but enough to get us down to the main city hospital. To this day, I 100% believe that he pissed off some paranormal being as I am certain that bone he took was the same bone he broke. Fucked his older sister years later. Still can't get boner out of my mind every time I bone his sister. My face won. Wish the ending was fake, but it was too fucked up to make up. It literally led to my pseudo erectile dysfunction. I eventually broke up with his smoking sister for many reasons, but the one relevant here is because every time I was over at her house, I would watch Yanni stare at me around corners, but he didn't even live there. Think my imagination got the best of me, Desu. Be me. Just graduated boot camp and checked into infantry school. First night in the holding barracks, have 1 to 3 a.m. watch, spooky thought JPEG. Other marine has front hatch, I have back hatch. Just sitting on a chair with a small desk, hear footsteps on the gravel every now and then, look outside and see nobody. This happens a few times. Halfway into my shift, hear voice outside. Hey fire watch, you got any smokes? Negative, no smokes here, I choke out. Silence. Air feels extremely cold. A few feet back from the doorway, see Marine in ERDL camo, face obscured. I'm armed with nothing but red lens flashlight. Shine light in the doorway to get a better look. Figure is gone. Sense a lingering presence, a ghostly energy in the room. Extremely unsettled at this point. See movement from corner of my eye. Pan my flashlight towards it. The shadowy silhouette stands a few feet away from the first pair of racks and foot lockers. Freezing wind rustles through the room though the windows are closed. Heart pounding, I fix my gaze on the figure. The RDL camo faded, tattered. Still no clear facial features. My voice trembles. Who are you? The figure remains motionless, silent. Identify yourself, motherfucker. 
as I finish my sentence, the figure retreats, dissolving into the darkness. Saw some spoopy things during night. Land nav as well. I suck at green text and also terrible at English, but here goes. Be me, 10 or 11 years old, in the woods with my dad, staying in my grandmother's vacation home. Not really a home, just a small train cart that was dropped on some land she owned. Cart was upgraded, fitted with two beds, some chairs, a table. Small kitchen up front of the cart, toilet outside and an outhouse. The right side of the cart was almost all windows, lots of 15 by 15 centimeter windows making up most of the wall, facing now onto the rest of grandmother's land. The two beds me and my dad stepped on were placed in a 90 degree angle, one bed up against the back wall of the cart, the other bed against the window wall. Be nighttime, both sleeping, dad on back wall, me on window wall. Nightmare is just a still shot of a dirt road out front of the cart, like a camera fixed in the air filming the road. In the nightmare, a disembodied woman's voice is whispering. I can't make out what she says. Suddenly, her voice becomes normal. Everything in Nightmare goes quiet and she says, Then I died. Suddenly, like a tsunami, an explosion of water bombards the dirt road as a disembodied woman's voice screams a blood-curling scream of absolute pure terror. Nightmare wakes me up, almost fly out of bed, heart pumping, panicking, looking out into the train cart, only lit up by the moonlight coming through the window wall. See my dad sitting on a small crate in the middle of the cart hunched over with arms resting on his legs. He's staring at the floor, with his jaw hanging loose and his eyes wide open, as wide as you could possibly open your eyes. His eyes don't blink, just staring at the floor. What the fuck is going on, that JPEG? I say quietly, Dad? He slowly turns his head at me and looks at me straight in the eyes with the most soulless stare I've ever seen. No response. Dad? What's going on? He suddenly stands up and starts walking towards me. I start freaking out. Dad, what are you doing? Slowly walking towards me, he puts his arms out, with his hands reaching towards me. Dad, what the fuck are you doing? Think my dad is about to kill me via strangulation in the woods. Screaming for my life at the top of my lungs. All of a sudden, I see out of the corner of my eye, my dad, flying out of his bed next to me. All the screaming woke him up. Just as my dad wakes up, the dad in front of me becomes like Mr. Smoke and just vanishes. For a second, I could see the residue of the mist in the room. My dad himself panicking, asking, what's wrong? Me freaking out, thinking I was just about to die, trying to frantically tell him what happened. He calms me down and a while later, we go back to sleep. And a while later, we go back to sleep. The cart was removed a few years later and the land was sold. I don't know if it was an actual ghost or what but I was the most scared I've ever been in my life. I once got drunk in a haunted basement, an old neighborhood in Denver that was built over an old cemetery. We were remodeling the basement. I went down taunting and talking my shit. My GF found me sitting cross-legged, eating raw steak, babbling incoherently. I wasn't blackout drunk or anything like that, just had a few beers and got cocky. The following day, I wasn't much better off, still confused and babbling. She is witchy, she took me to her witch shop, told them what happened. They suggested a blend of herbs and spices used for cleansing evil entities. Had to boil it and chant positive energy into it while I boiled. My cleansing intentions and pour into a warm bath and soak until I feel better. I was in the bath for like 10 minutes while my breath started to go. Then my hands and feet cramped up. I couldn't breathe or talk. I was shouting for my GF who was outside gardening. I couldn't shout, just mumble, what would have been screams. My body goes completely numb and I'm just stuck in the tub. My GF comes in and helps me out of the tub, into bed where I sat for pretty much two days. No passing, no eating, just straight sleep. When I woke, I was still jacked up and had a hard time thinking or talking for a few days longer. Had the worst horseshit luck for a month. Everything was going wrong. I knew a family friend who was a shaman slash a life coach. She did a reading with crystals and sage and shit. She freaked out when I started thrashing around and verbally started attacking her in some weird dialect she didn't know but guest was Middle Eastern sounding. She had to quit because she was freaked out. It took her a few weeks to contact us. She said some research and that I had multiple angry attachments. She used to give me this weird water from Wyoming, some spring that she blessed and I was immediately fine. Nothing else happened. Totally strange couple of months with no explanation. I have brown eyes. My family claims they were black for that time frame. I don't know what happened. Be me, 17 or 18. Summer. Family has a farm in New York's Appalachian region where we live. Friend works with us sometimes. Two of us want to go coyote hunting. 
My dad suggests we go in a field owned by an owner who wouldn't mind us being there. Get there on a bright moonlit night. Me carrying an AR-15, my friend with a bolt action 2.43, and a coyote call. Sit on the hillside, staring out into the woods, listening, looking for movement. Friend goes to move the coyote call. We hear coyotes bickering in the distance. I'm left alone for about half an hour to an hour. I start to have a funny hallucination. It looks like some pieces of white or tan fabric are floating above the ground on the edge of the forest, moving through the air, and then disappearing. They move like snakes in a kind of slithering motion. Notice their appearances often corresponded with coyote howls. Start to think the coyote sound off. Cloth snake things start appearing closer and closer. Start to wonder if we're being the ones hunted and if maybe they're trying to lure us out into the woods. Write it off as eye fatigue and freaking myself out. Friend comes back. Lay prone in grass side by side watching the forest. Say to him, you ever wonder if maybe there's no such thing as hallucinations? If maybe your eyes don't play tricks on you and what you see is real. He nods. I was thinking just that, actually. I had a kind of funny hallucination, I say. Looks like there's these things hovering off the ground, moving along the tree line. Tan colored, right? He says, his voice a little shaky. I've been seeing them too. We need to leave. Be next night. Decide to go back. Basically a repeat of previous night's encounter, except this time there were pale blue white lights in the grass and red lights in the trees. I also see shadow people in the area. Cloth creatures seem to fuck with my head. I got one that may or may not be explainable, but it was pretty weird. Be working in the Pacific Northwest Coastal Range over the summer in 2014. Property cuts off the generator around 10 p.m. each night. Be laying on a picnic bench in the parking lot and smoking a cigarette and stargazing like I do most nights before bed. Property is in the middle of nowhere and the parking lot is a gravel space surrounded by trees so the stargazing is amazing. You have to watch comets for hours and can see the Milky Way. See a little satellite drifting way up there at a decent clip. It eventually passes directly over me. The split second that it is directly above me at the perfect zenith. The entire parking lot fills with a bright white light. Brighter than day, I can still remember seeing the hard line where the light ended and the shadow began on the tree trunks at the edge of the lot. Similar to if you shined one of those 100 plus lumen flashlights down a dark trail. Light goes out and my eyes take a second to adjust to the dark and be able to see the stars again. Little satellite still moving on the same trajectory and speed as if nothing happened. Huh. Wow that JPEG. Go to bed. It wasn't creepy and doesn't really fit the bill for other UFO stories so I never really considered it paranormal slash supernatural but it was definitely unusual. Nobody has been able to explain how it happened yet. Be me, 8 or 9 maybe, pretty modern house by all accounts, not very spooky. Occasionally hear a man say hello when upstairs playing, a deep voice stretching the vowels, hello, something old about the voice, almost strained, always very clear but never anyone around, shrug it off, maybe I can hear a neighbor outside or it's my imagination, very rational on reflection as modern me would be spooked. One night, I'm in bed looking down the hall at my parents' doorway. A hand creeps around the frame and waves to me. Both parents are downstairs. Nope out, start screaming. Mom comes upstairs and tell her. Looks around and nothing there. Tells me it must have been a nightmare. I don't think so, creeped out now. A short while later, parents are at home, both outside. Little sister, five or six, and I are playing at the top of the stairs. Hello. I look at my sister. She clearly heard it too. Did you hear that? I ask. I hear it all the time. We both hear a loud laugh, the same voice of a strained old man, but there's something wicked now, malicious. We both scream and run downstairs, down the hall, out to the yard, upstairs to the road. Both parents are washing the car, no one else is around, burst into tears. We move shortly after. My sister and I vividly remember this day still, almost 30 years later.